I don't need to have 100,000 subscribers before I bring up such a video like this and say that season of obscurity can be for your good. But this is a process I'm walking through. I am in a preparation ground. I am not hidden. I am planted. So the season of obscurity could look like that season that the seed is in the ground planted, building itself, growing so that it can come out to grow out there to receive sunlight. Welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is such a pleasure to have you watch today's video. And this is for every creative, every dreamer, every visionary person. If you know you have a vision and you have a dream and you are ambitious, this will help you because there would be seasons that you actually feel like you are in obscurity. And I want to speak on the gift of obscurity what is obscurity the dictionary defines obscurity as the state of being indistinct or indefinite for lack of adequate illumination the reality is that especially in today's society everybody wants to be known everybody wants to be seen everybody wants to be under the light which is fame you want the light to shine on you for people to know who you are sometimes god takes time to allow us go through processes and these processes are not in vain but they have a purpose attached to it. Had it been a blew up on my first video, for example, I don't think people will appreciate the work that much. I might be burnt out. The pressure, I wouldn't be able to contain it. I won't be able to build the elasticity for my consistency. I won't be able to do a lot to sustain the journey. Having to go through step by step and growing bit by bit, it has actually helped me as much as I would have loved to really pew skyrocket but then the process is helpful because i'm learning i'm becoming better at creating i'm becoming better with trying to manage my time and how to decide on some things when to and when not to work when to quit and when not to quit working and all of that i can now be able to build a pattern of consistency around my work and my schedules so this helps because it is because of the gift of obscurity keeps allowing me show up every time and try it might look like a failure but then it's not actually a failure it is a lesson this is something that i thought about singers do not learn to sing on the stage with lights you don't see a singer walking out to the stage of performance and start learning how to sing neither do they do their practice up there they are there to perform they don't go up there and start doing lip roll. You're like, what is this? It feels so awkward. All in boom, boom, boom. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Neither do guitar players learn how to play the guitar on the stage. Fighters or wrestlers or boxers do not learn how to fight on the stage. They have a place in obscurity where people do not see the process and what the work they have to put in and the effort and everything that makes what they come out to show in presence of the light so sometimes if you are in obscurity maybe there are just some works that you need to do especially if you are a child of god you need to know that there are works that god wants you to do so that when you come out of obscurity you will not be found wanting, but you'll be found excellent. Woo. This is good because your excellence is not built in a day. It's built in a process over time. You keep trying, you fail, and you try again. You try, you learn, and you go to something better. Obscurity could be a gift if you decide to see it like that. But if you choose not to see obscurity as a gift, it can also become a place of confusion, a place of uncertainty. Definitely, a lot of things are going to feel uncertain because like the meaning, it is indistinct. It is indefinite. You don't know when like things are going to change. You're not in control of the time. You only know what you are doing. And when I talk about obscurity, I love talking about these two young people because I'm a young person and I see my life in that line, Joseph and David. Their life, to me, is very encouraging because their stories encourages me a lot and i cannot talk about the gift of obscurity without talking about these two guys number one point the season of obscurity are not wasted time sometimes you could feel like why am i wasting time you could feel like a delay that you're wasting time other people are going viral things are happening in other places and all of that and this is to encourage you it is not a waste of time if you choose today 
to learn lessons from this season of obscurity. What are you not doing better? Can you do this better? What have you not gotten excellent at? What are you not a professional at? Can you learn? Can you apply for courses? Can you do one or two things to become professional? And this is speaking to me also because this is my journey. I've not yet come out to a lot of illumination and I'm still in a place that is like indistinct. But then I am not ready to sit here and do a pity party. I'm not ready to sit here and start crying about my life. I'm trusting God. And I believe God, but then trusting God should not go without me going to work. Because Paul said, by the grace of God, I am who I am. But then his grace given to me was not in vain because I labored more than the other apostles. It means God can give you grace to do a lot, but you decide to do a few. God can give you grace to become excellent and you decide to sit down in laziness and not be. So don't just say, the grace of God, by the grace of God, and you are sitting down, what are you doing? This season of obscurity is not a wasted time. Let this time just come and pass so that the next phase will enter. That is where delay comes in because you keep remaining there till you learn the lesson you get to learn from there before you move to the next phase. Point number two, seasons of obscurity are for your preparation. I always did say that the process I saw David and Joseph went through were seasons of preparation like they were on preparation ground joseph's story is very important to me because it teaches me a lot that it was in potiphar's house that joseph learned how to be a manager of resources potiphar gave him all his resources and his household and told him manage joseph would not know how to be a good manager if he did not have opportunity to learn. So he had opportunity to get prepared so that he would manage the resources of Egypt later when he would interpret the dream and then he would give the wisdom of what needs to be saved up. He was able to learn. Yes, we talk about God's wisdom. God gave him the wisdom. God's presence was with him. But then the season and the process is very helpful because God allows us to go through the process we go through. And I will say this again, God allows us. Mm. <laughs> it's not a sweet process, but God allows us to go through it because it is for our good. I'm just sharing as if I would encourage myself. I don't need to have 100,000 subscribers before I bring up such a video like this and say that season of obscurity can be for your good. But this is a process I'm walking through so that when I even get there, I can tell someone, look, I made this video years ago or last year or three months ago because I don't know when things are going to turn out. It's indefinite. It's indistinct. But then there are lessons. I am in a preparation ground. But thank God that I'm even on that ground. It's better than being idle. Also, Joseph learned how to interpret dreams in the prison, which is a horn his gift inside the prison. And thirdly, Joseph learned leadership skills in the prison. What happened in Genesis 39, 22 to 23, it says, And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. Who's doing? Joseph's doing. The keeper of the prison did not even care about anything again. <laughs> the water was like, I'm going to go get myself some rest. <laughs> Joseph is in charge. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Oof. God's grace, God's favor, God's presence was with him and then he was able to do things and everything he touched was prosperous. You can trust God that this season, you're going to give yourself to the preparation and the process that you're not going to sit back and relax and wait for the change as if someone that is waiting seeing the sky looking like it wants to rain and it's like let me just wait till it rains and sometimes it can clear up and not rain in this season it may not look like i'm doing a lot but then i'm still going to step out get prepared pick the lessons gr like glean lessons from anywhere i can get because i'm depending on the lord and the lord favor will help you go forward. At the end of this video, I'm going to say a prayer. So I would love you to stay till the end of this video. Let's say the prayer together. The third point is seasons of obscurity are for growth. I will talk about David here. The reality is that growth is awkward. Growth doesn't look beautiful. So for someone that wants to grow their muscles, they go into the gym. It's, it's not easy. It's painful. It could be awkward in other places. 
no singer learns how to sing on stage, like I said, but it is very awkward when you go to see where they are learning how to sing, when they are doing their voice trainings and their, their vocal lessons. It is very awkward. Just like, what is that? <laughs> In season of obscurity, that is where it's beneficial. That is one of the benefits of season of obscurity. You learn in the dark so that when you come out to the light you can now put all these things to play now when we talk about david in season of obscurity david grew in his gift he was there being a shepherd taking care of the father's sheep and he was able to play some guitar and serenade himself and write psalms right there now we have psalms here to read about his life and everything he was able to journal his journey his pain everything he was playing the guitar and he became excellent at it that when Saul was looking for someone who could play guitar, they said that there is a young man who is an excellent person in playing this. I think let me pick my Bible and just read that portion. David did not just grow in gift, he grew in character and he grew in perseverance, which is tenacity and confidence. Let me read first Samuel chapter 16 from verse 15 to 18. Some of Saul's servants said to him, A tormenting spirit from God is troubling you. Let us find a good musician. What? Good musician to play the harp whenever the tormenting spirit troubles you. And it will play soothing music, and you will soon be well again. All right, Saul said, find me someone who plays well. Now, that's the emphasis. And bring him here. One of the servants said to Saul, one of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem is a talented harp player. Talented harp player. Not only that, he is a brave warrior, mm, a man of war, and has good judgment. He is also a fine-looking young man, and the Lord is with him this is beautiful the lord is with him kind of looks like the theme of the lives of joseph and david so he was able to grow in the season of obscurity in his gifts and became a talented player on the harp and an excellent and experienced player he was able to grow in character in first samuel 17 verse 15 it said after even though david was saving saul at this point he did not stop being humble to go back and take care of the sheep scripture says there but david went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in bethlehem what was the back and forth from saul's palace where he went to play the harp back to the sheep to take care of them that was humility at this point he had been anointed to be king but he didn't lose is humility that's a good one and what about tenacity it was in the season of obscurity that he learned how to be tenacious because the lion came as he gave in his story and he killed the lion and he killed the bear now this gave him confidence to go after fighting goliath what would have given a young boy that age that confidence sometimes some of the things god takes you through and those seasons look very confusing are things that god is using to build your courage and your confidence and to strengthen you to say look there are things ahead of you that i'm setting you up for it's a setup so david learned to be a worshiper a warrior and a leader in a season of obscurity you can read david's story and get to see all of this number four you are not eaten or buried you are planted the season of obscurity could look like you are being buried you're being hidden but it means you are planted god has planted you just like a seed that is put into a good soil because you are planted in god that is why you are not buried you're not buried under a rock that means if you're buried under a rock the possibility of growing would be impossible so then being planted in god it gives you room to say I am not buried. I am not hidden. I am planted because I am growing. When a seed is put into the ground, the ground is a dark environment. It has to then germinate and it looks awkward if you would see the process of a, a seed germinating before it starts forming. And then it grows. When it shoots out, people love it. People love it when it shoots out and it looks beautiful, it looks tender. But in the ground, it took a lot of work. So the season of obscurity could look like that season that the seed is in the ground, planted, building itself, growing so that it can come out to grow out there, to receive sunlight, to receive a lot of light, illumination. And I believe that God will take you as you are planted in him and bring you out of the soil so that you can receive sunlight the sun the light of god shines on you because god says that you people don't light a lamp and hide it under a bushel but they put it up to be seen so and he says you are the light of the world 
for you and people to see your value, you need to come to a place of knowing I am not buried. I am planted like a seed put in a good soil and the farmer gets to water it and wait for it to germinate and go through its own process and then comes out of the soil. So are we in the hands of our heavenly father. He keeps watering us. He keeps nurturing us. Mm. This is encouraging to me because he knows that we are going to come out of the soil. We are going to come out and then you will become large and we will be source of food for people. Let me end this video with this prayer. I want you to pray with me. God help me to become productive in this season of obscurity and uncertainty and confusion. Teach me all I need to know. Lead me into all I need to do. Strengthen me to do it with joy and take the glory in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope this video is beneficial to you. Let me know in the comment section and don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe to this video. This video is crucial. I would like you to share this very one. Share it to your friends, share it to people because it is going to help them. Do not forget to like. Thank you and God bless you.